Hello, it's Mary Musinian, your host on this bilingual podcast journey. Here we delve into the lives of fascinating Armenians from around the world, aiming to create a space for calm, beautiful and meaningful conversations for both you and our esteemed guests. Before I unveil today's special guest, I invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, the gateway to expanding our community and connecting with more people. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. So today is the 11th episode of the Without Noise podcast. Today's interview is with the talented and wonderful Eve Egoyan, an Armenian-Canadian composer and pianist based in Toronto. You may have already come across her on my YouTube channel, but today's discussion holds a unique significance. Eve Egoyan is gearing up for a distinctive concert title Longing and Belonging on May 9th. Our conversation delves into thoughtful topics such as identity and the profound role of music in preserving one's cultural essence. I assure you, it's a captivating dialogue that lies ahead, but first let me share what Canadian CBC TV has to say about her. The Canadian pianist Yves Goyan, one of the most celebrated contemporary music specialists in Canada, has spent her life trying to move beyond the limitations of the piano. Some of the most acclaimed composers in the country and the world have written music for her. If you go to hear Egoyan perform, you have got to be up for anything, mixed media performance experiments, our long minimalist works that flirt with total silence, unfathomable and virtuosic barrages of notes, audio samples of Armenian folk music, bright lights, video screens, choreography, poetry, new colors, new sounds, and the piano doing stuff isn't supposed to do. I feel so honored to have this chance to to talk to you, to have this conversation with you. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you for inviting me to be part of this. I have so many questions to you, but I would like to start uh, as you have a concert uh, on May 9. I am pretty sure both Armenian and Canadian audiences, they are waiting uh, for this concert so much. But before we go deep in that, uh, I would like to um, talk to, uh, to you about the cultural fusion. What I was thinking about when uh, when I had a chance to listen to your mu music, I always uh, thought about this thing uh your repertoire includes some armenian music as well or i i can't compare i mean most of them canadian or armenian i don't know how you combine the armenian and canadian culture or, or maybe i could say international culture i don't know but armenian and the other part how you combine them and um, how you make the balance between them so the program that i'm playing is music by armenian composers but this is unique to me. So as you said, um, prior to this, my my artistic practice is um, mostly to interpret works by living international composers. And actually this excluded Armenian composers. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's kind of, there's a background story to that. I, um, I was, I'm obviously Armenian. I was brought up by Armenians, mm -hmm. <laughs> Armenians who had left. Uh, they were both born in Cairo, uh, Heliopolis, Heliopolis in Cairo. And then they, they immigrated to Canada in 62. There was a big discrepancy between my parents um, in regards to um, Armenian culture. My my father was an, his parents were orphans from the genocide, uh, and he was extremely emotional when it came to anything Armenian, including mm -hmm. music. So what this meant was for me, um, I was brought up in an, an emotion in an environment where music was actually Armenian music was very volatile emotionally. My father 
would would have loved me to play Katsudorian um, or incorporate Armenian music into my life. But there was something about living with somebody who was so, I didn't understand at that time, the trauma mm -hmm. issue. So he held this trauma and he was just trigger emotional around anything Armenian. So actually I, rather than embrace it, because he, it, I found it so disturbing. Mm -hmm. I actually rejected it. I, I stood, I, st I stayed away from Armenian music. Um, and so coming to it now as an adult, from mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, in strangely also after my father passed away and my mother. So weirdly, and now I, I mean, I'm talking to you about this in retrospect that maybe on some level, I needed to come to it on my own terms because of. The environment that I was brought up with, and I felt I couldn't, I couldn't hold my father's emotions around him. Mm -hmm. So, um, how I'm coming to this program comes from a sensibility of programming non-Armenian music. So, and when I'm pr programming non-Armenian music, I look for gender equity. That means both uh, women are representative, re represented as well as men. Uh, and I also look for a curatorial, like a vision to the program where the works actually uh, speak to each other, uh, like so that it exists as a very good program mm -hmm. of music. And I'm actually just thrilled that this program works. Like it's one of those things that you you hope. It's like if you have a gallery and you're putting paintings alongside each other, you hope that there's some sort of a conversation between those pieces. Yeah, of course, yeah. Because, you know, if, as an audience member, you're listening to a piece and then you move to the next piece and then you move to the next piece. And for me, a strong program is whether is when all those pieces can coexist, they can be together mm -hmm. uh, strong in themselves. So uh, also when I'm looking for pieces of music by certain composers, I look for um, strong piano pieces, like strong pieces written for the instrument that I'm dedicated myself to. So these are the sensibilities that came together in this program. So that, that weird, weirdly, like, yes, they're Armenian, but as a professional musician and pianist, this is what I need to do to make a successful program for my audience. So I, I, I gather these pieces with that in mind. So, you know, can I walk on stage and feel very comfortable with each piece I stand behind each of them and how they also work as a program. So at the end, there's a sense of the program. It's like a, it's almost like a meal, you know, you, you plan a meal and, you know, whether it all goes together and at the end, if people are going to feel really satisfied. Yeah, yeah I, I, I totally understand what you mean. And um, uh, please provide us uh, a little bit detail, more details about the concert concerning with uh, who are the uh, composers, uh, what kind of pieces are you going to, to present? What are the pieces you are going to play for us? So I actually kind of, again, I um, I sort of avoided, this is not an Armenian, or not actually, uh, I tend to play, look for composers who are uh, underrepresented. Um, mm -hmm. So we know Katadrin and we know Babajanian. So the, the person who is not, not that we do know of on this program is Gomadas. Mm -hmm. It's Seven Dances for Piano, which are extraordinary pieces for piano. They are there are some very strange translation of both folk music tradition and also how he could imagine how the folk instruments could be played on the piano. Mm -hmm. So it's actually very unusual piano writing as well as compositionally, like it's extraordinary, it's extraordinary piece of music uh, beyond, you know, being Armenian and what we know of Gomadas and how we revere him. It is actually uh, a singular piece of music for piano. So that is the familiar one. The next most familiar one might be Jalalian. So he's a Lebanese Armenian composer. Um, I chose his work because his, so oh, the other thing, sorry, I'm jumping. So we have Gomadas, but the program also represents co living composers in Armenia and music from the diaspora. Mm -hmm. So I was also wanted to, uh, that it was broad. So it felt international. Um, and so when my audience, my my non-Armenian audience comes in a weird way by seeing that there's a diaspora, then they might think, oh, why do those people move? You know, like, why is there such a huge diaspora? Well, because of the genocide, which they probably don't know about. So it's sort of like they might think about that. Mm -hmm. I, I also want to say that there is a short movie, uh, interview movie with uh, uh, of these composers, which we will try to figure out how to situate that, whether mm -hmm. that's 
for the show. So the composers are speaking of their own music. You mean during the concert? Uh, this, we this, this is a... From- uh-huh. No, this, this is the tricky thing. Sorry, this is something that's still tr- ongoing. So the unfortunately, oh. <laughs> or fortunately, the, the duration of the music itself is already an hour and a half. And so the trick is that this, we tried to cut down these seven. So we we have um, we have Tigran Mansurian speaking for Gomadas, for example. Mm-hmm. So we're trying to figure out how to, where do we put this I see. very interesting document? Whether it's, uh, we're trying to find out whether the hall has a place that there is almost like a pre-concert mm-hmm. thing that people can go and hear the composers speak about their own works. Okay, so I was interrupting myself. Um, so we have this Lebanese composer, Jalalian. So mm-hmm. his music, uh, so is it, no, diasporic piece. Um, he's bringing together Arabic influences plus Armenian. So it's a very, um, it has a very distinctive character to it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the uh, and the two Armenians who are living in Armenia, whose music is, music are, is represented, are well-known Armenian composers. But Sharafian, yes. Sharafian and yeah, Sharafian and Mansurian. The Mansurian piece is a very small piece uh, dedicated to a very close friend of his. But some part of me thinks, for me, because this whole program has this sense of haunting or a feeling of. Um, you know, uh, uh, our ancestors, there's something about this person who he wrote the piece for, and I feel almost like it's a dedication to my ancestors. Like there's, mm-hmm. so it's a short piece, and um, the piece by Sharafian are excerpts from his piece, Goat Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's uh, I it's a very interesting piece of piano writing too, because it's um, he wrote it originally for, uh, I think, uh, orchestral work, and then he reduced it for piano. Oh, I see. Um, and then he, it was, I think, no, it was originally for pantomime. So it, it is theatrical. Uh, and there's, so coloristically at the piano, it's, it's, it's it has a lot of space, mm-hmm. but it's also, is extremely emotive in a very um, discreet way. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the piece by Mary Yumjan from uh, New York, Brooklyn, New York, um, is a very direct reference to the genocide. Uh, she bases her piece on a poem so there's sort of the feeling of before, during, and after. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a very um, sort of gutsy, uh, not afraid, direct piano kind of style. Mm-hmm. Very kind of lush and emotional. And then um, there's a piece by Nadine um, Katrian from Germany, Munich. She's living in Germany right now. Yeah. And she's interesting because she takes the, uh, like, the you know delicate Armenian melodies either from church or uh, uh, and then and then she but then she puts it like so she's coming from a I guess a more European tradition of uh, new music and it's quite it's quite um, so there's it's both has fragility and fierceness mm-hmm. uh, so it's in its fierceness it's extremely emotional like just that sort of that thing that's sort of crush crushing. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, who else is on the program? Um, just trying to think. I think, and then there's a piece that I wrote um, that I wrote before I went to Armenia, um, and it includes uh, what we call samples of Armenian folk instruments. Um, so while I'm playing, you hear them, and I based it on um, going through some of Gomadas's. Uh, he has these uh, just uh, lots of. Um, he collected a lot of Armenian folk songs, and so I went through those and just very subjectively picked things, fragments, and use those as the texture for the work. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that might be it. So, sorry, I'm trying to remember who else is on the program. I think that's it. And the concert is only one day, yes? Yeah, the concert is one day, and now we're trying to find uh, other, other like, for it to travel. Oh, uh, uh, within Canada or uh, outside? Inter- internationally. International. Oh. So, yeah, yeah, so, um, you know, talking about because uh, like it's important for me to play for both Armenian and non-Armenian audiences, mm-hmm. and this program this program is a, like a real piano recital. So um, even if you're not Armenian, <laughs> you're go- you would hear like seven really amazing piano pieces. Yeah, 
You know, when we are a child or a teenager or a young person, somehow it's a different story. But we, when we have already um, uh, a life experience and we we somehow explored our heritage in a different way, it it becomes a different story. What are, what is your heritage and what what you are going to do with that? Uh, what inspires you to to play Armenian music now in in this uh, moment of your life maybe it is connected with um, with uh, the discovery of armenia let me say because you went uh, for the first time to armenia a couple of years ago yeah maybe it, it is coming by age when you realize somehow uh, that it is really important who you are, what is behind you, yes? So uh, w what kind of comments do you have on this? I have a lot um, because I just want to go back to my childhood because it was it was a song that triggered my father. So mm -hmm. his mother, who was an orphan from the genocide, would sing to him a song called Yeras. Uh, so it was a song and sh she would cry and he would then cry. And then I would just, I would freak out because I would just had no idea how to deal with my father crying. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then, so because of that, I had this very, I was very wary of Armenian music and that emotional trigger thing. I, mm -hmm. as a Canadian, I couldn't hold that level of emotionalism somehow. Like it just was not part of this scene here. Um, and then my friend Gassio Zunian Mm -hmm. uh, really wanted me to play. So she's a violinist as well as a scholar. And she really wanted me to play an Armenian concert with her. And I thought, okay, she's a friend. I trust her. And mm -hmm. we played, we played the regular things. We played Kachadurian, Govardas, and Babajanya mm -hmm. for piano. And, and that was my gentle, um, I don't know. Is it, so it was emotional, an emotional thing. And then I, I decided that I wanted to go to Armenia to 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 meet composers there, and, and just to so I received a Canada Council, which is an Arts Council mm -hmm. grant funding, to travel there and to meet Armenians, Armenian composers. And um, so when I was there, I met these wonderful composers and went to. I mean, and then I realized how what an amazing musical culture Armenia has, mm -hmm. and that I'm part of that tradition. Like, I started listening to Armenian pianists, and I thought, oh my god, I I actually. I totally understand where they're coming from as musicians. Like I feel the same way how they phrase. And then I went to hear um, a folk ensemble playing um, at the Netagatsi Institute, these young musicians with a master musician leading them. Narash, Narash you mean? Narash uh, ensemble or no, no, it was actually this Nerdagatsi Institute has like I think it's like an educational program. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes <laughs> they are coming different groups and presenting some music. No, you know. no, and and no. So there was this concert because I was there for uh, the, uh, the genocide Memorial Day, April twenty fourth, mm -hmm. and they had this concert, and I was sitting in the front row, and I just had this transcendent experience of listening to these musicians. I would never heard anything. I think it was one of the strongest. Uh, responses to music I've ever had in my life. I mm -hmm. I heard these these players, these young players, all these instruments playing this unison melodies. So they're playing together, mm -hmm. all but perfectly together. They're all feeling exactly the same thing on all the different colors of what they're doing. And you know, then there's so and there's the drone and there's the percussion and then there's these melodies like this mm -hmm. interwoven and they're totally totally together like they're they are they are a community of musicians playing this mm -hmm. music together um and so and then i come back to canada and then i start thinking well i need to have gender balance because i didn't find a lot of women composers and then i mm -hmm. started looking uh, abroad and then araxia altunian uh, who is from beirut suggested also jalalian and uh so i and i yeah i'd never heard of him before mm -hmm. um so that's how this program kind of came together and that's been my journey um i'd still like to go back i'd still have uh so also when i went back the second time i took a bunch of those full clerk instruments that i uh into the radio station and we recorded mm -hmm. them professionally mm -hmm. so that did then cut up what they did um of course i have permission <laughs> for this <laughs> they know that this is what i'm going to do and use it for future compositions so just you know take their sounds that i recorded and um yeah so there's future yeah. projects for uh, n n new pieces using Armenian 
um, Eva, the life before visit and after, is there any difference? Is there any, I mean, something that has been changed in you and you would like to share about it? Has it been changed or not? Uh, yes. I mean, I also have started, I think you know this, I've started to learn Armenian. Um, so yes, now, by the way, now, you are learning Armenian. It's already learning. two, three years? Yeah, so I started uh, online during um, COVID. Yeah. And because my parents, uh, as Canadians, they decided to integrate. Um, my my It was my brother's first language, so he does speak it. But I never got that opportunity. So um, uh, there's something about learning how to to read it, you know, those, the form of that is, this is, I mean, this sounds kind of so silly for an Armenian listening to me because it's so, it's kind of odd as an adult to decide to, to, to make these connections and to also to be careful mm -hmm. about what feels real and like what feels true. Mm -hmm. and it does feel, tr I do feel different playing Armenian music. Uh, there's a real clarity of emotional conviction. Mm -hmm. um, so, and like I said, when I heard those Armenian, or when I hear Armenian musicians, I feel very connected to that tradition as a musician. Mm -hmm. um, and when I meet Armenians like you, uh, I am confused about the East-West divide. Mm -hmm. um, it does feel like Western-speaking Armenians feel threatened by Eastern-speaking Armenians. And <laughs> I'm sort of in between this because I don't have that much... Um, like I don't have my history of being an Armenian is is not deep, so I I by bringing also this program together, sort of my hope to bring together historical, diasporic and so and West Western, somehow yes bring it, bring it together because it's you know Ar Armenia is such a small yeah place. <laughs> right. and it's sad that there's division yeah. Yeah, definitely. Could you say that there were mentors in your um, musical journey for you who somehow um, played a, a special role in your composer life? I mean, or you, whatever you explored or, or found, you did it by yourself or there were any special persons. It, it could be, I mean, I mean, composers, uh, personal connections with, uh, with other people. Who are your mentors? Well, I mean, this is also kind of embarrassing. So not only am I learning how to be an Armenian late in life, I've also allowed myself to explore composition. And that happened because of COVID as well. Mm -hmm. because, uh, because all every performing, touring musician's life was mm -hmm. sort of stopped suddenly. Um, I thought, oh, wow, okay, this is a chance for me to actually do things. I, I have time. Yeah. I don't have to play other people's music right now. I shouldn't say the word have to. I, I love interpreting work as well mm -hmm. so I was so I finally I had been building towards it I'd um I'd been exploring uh with technology how to augment the piano um through touch uh how to transform the piano's sound mm -hmm. I had had a residency at Avatar uh with a programmer to do that and so I had the had the beginning tools for that mm -hmm. and in a weird way by creating a new new sounding piano, I was allowing myself then to move away from all the different composers who I'd played. Mm -hmm. I feel very supported by the composers who I work with. And it's, of course, I'm informed by the music that mm -hmm. I've played. I resist, I, I resisted um, out of, I guess, sort of shyness to have true compositional, like composition classes. Mm -hmm. Um, because I am nervous about not like the whole thing is about creating my own voice. And I know that I have a lot of respect for people I work with. And my fear is that if I started working with somebody and they tried to guide me, I would become like who they were. Like it, it wouldn't, it's not the problem of the person, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how seriously I respect other people's voices. Yeah. Because I've been an interpreter for so long, I take, I try to be as true to the other person as possible. Mm -hmm. So the danger with the type of person I am, if I'm working with somebody, is that I'll try to mold myself. Mm -hmm. and so that is why I haven't, 
like I haven't I don't have like one person I can say who is yeah. a mentor uh because I'm I'd be nervous to um to feel like I was doing things wrong which there's no there's no right or wrong and I prepared to take the the risk of I'm just doing this journey by myself mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah I see. Um, if uh, we're living in very difficult times, maybe each generation had uh, its own difficulties, but uh, uh, right now, so many wars in different corners of the world, and you know, our country, our motherland is in a very difficult political situation, especially after war and etc. And of course, we are ordinary people and we don't have solutions. We just have have this uh, thoughtful times uh, uh, every day thinking about our country, how to survive in this uh, difficult and very cruel uh, situation of the world. And what I want to ask you, uh, why it is I mean, is it important to think about identity in this period of um, uh, time of the world? Uh, does identity matter and if yes why Uh, because these are the times also about globalization somehow yes and we understand that we should accept somehow the the process of globalization but there is also a fear to 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 uh, lose something during this process so what kind of role uh, does have uh, identity in this process? And uh, is it important for you to keep this identity, to talk about the identity? And um, my second question is, um, and I will remind you if you forget, uh, what kind of role plays uh, music for preserving identity? Yeah. It's a really big question. Um I think I might start with your second one. Yeah. I think, I mean, the fact, the fact is that very few North Americans know anything about Armenia. Um, you know, as Armenians, at least the Armenians I know, um, they sort of keep to themselves and the, the culture is very inward looking. I mean, I understand that the reason for that, of course, is a sort of protection thing, you know, because of the historical, historical mm-hmm. past. The, the the fact that the genocide has been denied and not you know it's it's a very difficult emotional it's a very difficult emotional thing um to and 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 now when armenia is under extreme threat in a situation where the world is we don't see any movement of protection of even larger languages like in the ukraine and uh in in Gaza you know these are huge wars and not nobody's stopping anything yeah and you know and then we have these these elections coming up and it looks like the it seems like the bullies are are ruling the world right now and that democracy is very much under threat and you know yes i'm terrified that armenia it's very small and it's you know something happens is anyone going to notice um so the role of the artist, I don't know, it's like, I guess, a carrier of the both the historical and the present day situation. And, and, and I think to through through performance like this to to help people be aware. But as far as like, unfortunately, like I think even an awareness, I don't even like I, because I'm not seeing anything di- diplom- in diplomacy actually being effective right yeah. now. Yeah. I have no answer to this. I, I you know, with my daughter. You know, I have these sort of awkward conversations because she wants to go to Armenia. And I'm thinking, well, is Armenia going to exist? You know, should we go immediately? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and yeah, yes, historically, this is something that happens, that lands get taken over, that cultures are destroyed, and then they surface again. And But as 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 Armenians witnessing and this witnessing this country that really has nothing that anyone really needs to take, mm-hmm. um, you know, there's what is it? It does. It's not a prosperous land. It's it's just a homeland. Um, yeah, it's a very, very 
scary situation. And I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know if I accept globalization as an excuse for what might happen or what is happening. If you're saying because you talked about globalization. Yes, and of course, identity, yes, I know what you're saying, because I mean, of course, uh, during climate change right now, too, there's these just huge migrations and movement of people, which will increase, and we have to accept the other. So to uh, to actually talk about identity in a time when we're just all human, um, dealing with the same larger issue, which is that our planet is, uh, our planet is under threat by ourselves, uh, and we're not coming together on that, but that is the... The, the larger issue uh, mm-hmm. for our, for us and our children. Um, and I don't know, you, you'd think that that overwhelming threat would, and the, I mean, the other tricky thing is too, when, when, when these, these wars are happening, then it distracts us from that larger picture, mm-hmm. which is uh, climate change and well, climate disasters. I mean, we see that these things happening, but as far as like actually being ac- active to change things, coming together mm-hmm. to to change these things is it's not happening fast enough i know that you uh went to armenia for two times yes if i'm not mistaken when you were there was it the country which you um expected to see or what um uh, did you feel that you are somewhere where you belong i mean uh, why i am asking uh, this question uh, because uh, your concert has a very interesting title, Longing and uh, Belonging, yes. Could you please explain me why did you choose this uh, title for your concert? And what kind of feelings did you find when you first arrived uh, in uh, Armenia? Oh, that's, so, there's so many things. Um, I guess I should go again back to being a diasporic Armenian. Mm-hmm. I think um, Armenians from the diaspora hold um, a lot of complicated energies and i'm remembering as i'm talking to you when i was a student in berlin i went to there was an armenian festival armenian arts festival and i went to see the dancing and the music and all that and i thought wow like this is i feel very close to this spirit of being armenian like so it's when and that which is sort of a strange thing it's it's because there is the heavy historic history, but then there's also this joyful celebration through art and dance, and just and there's a certain delicacy, uh, and there's something about Armenian historical art. Um, and I felt that when I was in Armenia, Armenia, so and I thought, then I thought, wow, these Armenians on stage, these artists feel very different from the diasporic Armenians. And then when I uh, was there, and I was meeting people. And I was, you know, it's not the place where my 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 four four grandfathers and grandmothers would have come from because it would have been uh, present day Turkey. Mm-hmm. I still felt, um, like I said, very connected to the musicians, very connected to the people. I connect to you. There is something about um, Armenians from Armenia that still, in spite of the the extreme. Uh, pressure that Armenia is under right now. Mm-hmm. There is something that you hold, which I believe is um, well. You're still coming from a land like you that you still call your home, like your homeland, and there's some sort of grounding to that. Yeah. And um, and when I saw when I was there again, I I don't want to dream too much because this is obviously not where my my family would have come from but the the sense of uh the the land the light the it was is it was as i imagined it might be um that feeling of being there's something very simple about being there um Mm -hmm. how do i describe it i know these kind of things they are really not easy to describe no it's just kind of like it was easy like you know the way people were the way people behaved what i was eating what i was drinking what I was breathing, what I was seeing. Um, uh, I really, I don't know. Like, so when I say simple, I don't mean it in like. Yeah, I understand. It was, but it didn't feel like there was, there was a lack of complexity in being there, <laughs> that it felt natural, easy. Natural, uh, easy. I felt yeah. very, very invited, very loved, embraced, 
there was a lot of intellectual discourse, like the level of intellectualism, a uh, sense, oh, an importance of culture. Um, mm -hmm. I think that um, I think that diasporic Armenians, I think that's been kind of, um, I don't know, like it felt, but anyway, culture is super important for Armenians in Armenia. Mm -hmm. um, and this is where I feel sad that I don't read the literature of our, uh, I guess I don't speak Armenian. Um, but again, uh, you know, I went to see, and all the, yeah, art, art is really important. So as an artist, to know that I come from a culture where art and discourse are really important. important. Um, yeah. I think, you know, when people immigrate, well, things become difficult. Like you're, mm -hmm. and in a weird way that, that takes away, because you're like, there's this thing that my parents had to do, which is, you know, they came and then they had to, they had to make a living, right? So they there were a lot of sacrifices and priorities change, and it just, it's not so easy. Mm -hmm. Not that not that living in Armenia is easy, but again, I can't really describe. It. Like, but you know what I mean? That there's there are some things that are just you feel there's a community. It's like a forest on some level. There's a community. There's a sense of support. There's a sense of understanding each other. Mm -hmm. You don't really have to translate. Yeah. I'm sure you have to, you don't have to talk as much like you don't have to like like people understand probably how you're feeling yeah um you know and when you when you leave you or like my parents and so what I was brought up with and what I said too I didn't know how to deal with my father's emotionalism because mm -hmm. I was as a Canadian mm -hmm. so um I feel sort of sad for that now because I wish that we had embraced or just talked to him saying well, so why are you Let's talk about why you're so sad. It's almost, uh, if I'm not mistaken, three or four years you are learning uh, Armenian language. Um, how does it sound for you uh, as a music? I mean, I mean, language is a music in general, not only Armenian. I'm not talking specifically about Armenian language. Just for me, language is a music. What kind of connection you find between music and Armenian language, the music you play and with the Armenian music, the, uh, about the Armenian music now in your head and in your uh, heart, I don't know, because you feel more closer, yes, now to the Armenian music than before. So what kind yeah. of uh, feelings? I wish I could. So I just want to let you know, when I started taking Armenian classes, I thought it was a like conversational Armenian. But no, it's so it's just want to let you know too. It's once a week, not including summers, and everyone is at different levels. So even though, so I haven't, we're just starting to go off the page. Um, and so what I'm finding interesting is how in my my memory of the words that I know, there are a lot of words that I don't even know if I should talk about my or my Armenian language because I just feel like maybe in a year from now we'll start really like now we're like because I'm just learning like for example just learning tenses repeating past tense the irregular this is the the boring structural things about and Armenian language. Western Armenian yes not Eastern Western Armenian no, yeah my teacher my teacher teaches uh, she was born in Istanbul but she studied in Yerevan and now she's in Paris and she teaches Western Armenian okay. she okay. she can she is an Eastern Armenian speaker as well. I um and Turkish and whatever French and English. So um but uh so I, I'm not I couldn't I wouldn't want to talk to you, speak to you in Armenian right now. And the, but the musical thing of it, uh I for sure I feel like even reading it because I read notation, I was able to learn how to read it quite mm -hmm. quite well, quite quickly. And I I'm I'm desperate at this point to be in an Armenian speaking environment because I really do feel like if I just heard it like for two weeks only, it would actually just like, it would start living in my life. Um, mm -hmm. So what happens now, uh, you know, I'll like, I'll be thinking, or sometimes Armenian words are just floating in my head and I won't associate with what they are. We heard Armenian. So in my, my parents, in my family home, we only, I only heard Armenian when my parents were arguing. Mm -hmm. So it was not a positive association with the language. Mm -hmm. um, so, but now I realize that actually it's a very beautiful sounding language, <laughs> which mm -hmm. I never knew it was a beautiful sounding language. Um, so I, I, I'm in it for the long, the long haul. I feel, I really do feel like it's just, I'm not going to stop now, but because I don't live, I don't hear it. Mm -hmm. It's for it to actually become a, a working language for me. will yeah. take a little bit, a different type of approach or 
a lot longer. I remember that once uh, when I had an interview with your brother at Omegoyan, he was described being a situation uh, when they were in a party and they were drinking with all Armenians, if I'm not mistaken, it was in Artsakh. Um, uh, and he, he said to me that, you know, I didn't know that I can speak uh, Armenian. I mean, in a party and I, I could, I would be able to say Genats, Genats, you know, or yes, what I mean. Yeah. But then suddenly I, I began to speak and it was Armenian and I was, it, it was so emotional. I, I was um, listening to him and I, I was thinking, unconsciously we keep this language heritage these sounds it still remains in your head somewhere i don't know in head but, but, in, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but he when he actually he only spoke armenian uh he in our, in egypt and actually partially he's the reason why we didn't speak armenian at home because what happened was when he so my grandmother was with us my grandmother did not speak english so yeah. my brother and my grandmother only spoke armenian and then when he went to school because he didn't speak English, his the kids started to tease him, mm. and then he started to refuse to speak Armenian. Mm. And so when when I came along, it was there was no Armenian. So I never had it even. Like it's wonderful that he has that, you know. So that he because he came here, yeah. So let's say the first four years of his life, or I don't know when he started school. Mm. Let's say mm -hmm. six years of his life, he was speaking Armenian. Armenian. Uh, yeah, I didn't have that. Mm -hmm. Yes, you don't have it, but somewhere I'm yeah, pretty somewhere. Sure. I, yeah, somewhere, somewhere, somewhere it, it is it exists, you know. Yeah, and, it, and I and I get a lot of pleasure from reading it, and uh, yeah, I get it. there's some there is some deep there is something. You're right. There is some some and there is a desire. Like there there is something there. If, and maybe my last question would be, um, because you were born in Canada and you have this Western view, um, Western culture had uh, a very big impact, I guess, on you, yes? And um, visiting Armenia, seeing Armenian um, uh, cultural environment and etc. I mean, is there something you would suggest to change in cultural environment or cultural policy in Armenia? Oh, I don't know if I can answer that question. Um, I mean, I think I found it interesting that there was so much Russian influence. I mean, but of oh. course there is because the education system is the same and that, you know, the the training for, or the Russian training for musicians is is very, very good. And the but the tradition of writing music is also very strong. And I felt mm -hmm. that a lot, a lot of the composition, the new composition felt um, in that tradition, which of course, and which is really interesting because in a sense, it's a diasporic, thing too you know we're talking about Jalalian in Lebanon sounds like in you know, Arabic or we hear married wherever like wherever wherever somebody is living um has an influence and of course with the the Russian influence of in Armenia there is a definitely there's a discourse there with a tradition of culture I'm talking about music I'm not sure about visual arts so much but in uh, the, a Russian culture of uh, music uh and you know in Armenia um what would I recommend I don't know. I mean, I mean uh, I think... sorry. Do you do you feel that uh, we are open to the world? You see, uh, just a couple of minutes ago, you um, you said that uh, no, in Northern America, very few people or not many people know where is Armenia, who, what is Armenia, and etc. What is Armenia? But, but that, that's an that's an education thing. It's not Armenian problem. Mm -hmm. um, but I think uh, North Americans don't know anything much about the world. In general, we're not educated that way. In Europe, um, well, Europe, Europeans are, have much more sen sense of history. And, you know, if I go to, uh, I don't know, anywhere and I say they're an Armenian, they, they know, they know. Yeah. It's not, it's not an Armenian's fault. It's, um, it's a type of inward, inward looking of uh, North American education system. Yeah. So it's not, I'm not, I'm not faulting Armenians for that um, at all. Like it's not. Um, but Armenians, I think, are like are, are like an extraordinarily curious and intelligent race. I, I have nothing. I wouldn't say. <laughs> I think all the Armenians that I met, the musicians there, they both they they are trying to tread an interesting territory between wanting to live in Armenia still, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and to be out to take it outside. You know, Armenia, as you know, ge geographically is quite 
far away from places. It's in the middle of everything, but quite far away at the same time. <laughs> like it's it's a strange location. It's like really far east, and you know, it, yeah. So I mean, it's you know between Georgia and I mean, how many people know anything about? anything from that region really like between even turkey like i mean i'm not you know t- turkey georgia Iran, like people don't really know much about what's happening in that region except for uh, yeah right i mean it's culturally it's not um and of course we're not we're a nation of fewer people mm-hmm. um i still think we're an extremely expressive race we have many musicians and many thinkers and scholars and so very many artists and i think that they're all everyone's producing armenians i think are unbelievable uh, uh generators of whatever they do i mean yeah. and also very uh they're survivors i mean we're, we're innovative also- somehow in this situation they are uh, innovators as well i mean they always in in a, in a meaning that they always find new ways to to present themselves to to create uh, and uh, really it's a it's a creative land and we have so much to show to the world yes and uh, we we really need to to find um, more strategic ways to to show uh, to the world who we are in a, from the creative point of view as well Eve, thank you so much for this wonderful conversation. If there is anything you would like to add and I forgot to ask, please, uh, you have time and you can add uh, whatever you want. The sun is coming to your... Uh, so, sorry, yeah. I don't know if I should, you know, yeah, that's always strange that during the interview, the sun came out. Um, <laughs> It's a yes. good sign. Our people, with Armenian people, would say it's a good sign. Uh, sun is coming to your face, so it's a good sign, you know. Um, thank you one more time for this wonderful interview. Uh, if- your questions are very, um, well, they're very, they're very deep questions. They're emotional. They're so. I mean, like you know, I, an identity is a such a funny thing, but like I really do. Like it was, it's very strange. The the feeling of the feeling of people has changed and that's sort of sad like the feeling of mm-hmm. you know the Armenians in the diaspora and you guys you know I it's a different feeling and I don't know what the and it's not just the language and I wish I wish but I think I think also which I don't know so much I think there's a lot of division within the Armenian community anyway yeah I think you know, like I know that my parents used to have like there was Ramgavar Tashna like there's there's always been yeah yeah there's like, always been and this is you know, you know this divided us in too many pieces and the results uh, we still carry these results uh, and uh, it didn't direct us uh, to the to the good place this division uh, if i may say i don't know but, but there's also is- where you know where people are born like even my parents my mother, you know, my parents are born in Egypt, but they were suspicious, for example, of Armenians born in Lebanon. Like, mm-hmm. so, like it didn't, so it wasn't even just, it wasn't this whole Ram Gavar. Like, I, there's, you know, which church, uh, but there's also, yeah, so they would, Armenians have been, uh, because we, because we're survivors, we adapt, right? Yeah. And so these adaptations, so like, I guess you take on a bit of whatever culture you're in, and that are, are automatically makes these divisions, well, sort of makes these divisions. I just felt I, it's, it's a, you know, if, as an outsider, it's a very complicated, yeah. I mean, insider, insider, outsider, but wishing that there wasn't so much yeah. division. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to, to see you on the concert and not only uh, during the concert. And um, I will put this interview on my Facebook page and on my YouTube um, uh, page and invite all Armenians whom I know to your concert. And I'm pretty sure we will have a wonderful evening with you uh, and with your music. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Mary, for having me. Uh, and we will see see you soon. Bye, Eve.